Welcome to the Captain's Corner, your place to get informed about first steps to recovery and how Self Harbor helps to create healthy and safe communities. During our live episodes, we share inside views, real stories, and also educational resources. And today, our special guest doo -doo 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 -doo, is Yay. Kelly. Yay! <laughs> Kelly Arnold with the um, Red Deer Native Friendship Society here in Red Deer. Hi, Kelly. Hello. Hello. Hi, and Kath. Kath. Hey, Cal. <laughs> So, and of course, our captain is here, Kath Hoffman, and I am Kirsten Huer. And um, yeah, let's dive right in. Kelly, we are super excited that you are joining us here today. Um, maybe to start, just please introduce yourself and uh, tell our listeners and um, viewers today, um, who are you and what is the Red Deer Native Friendship Society? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to the Captain's Corner. Um, it's always good to see you, Kath, honestly. And um, uh, so my name is Kelly, and I'm just going to try to change my view here. Um, I apologize. No worries. <laughs> so um, I work here at the Red Deer Native Friendship Society. I am the Nana Tewayawin Culture Team Coordinator. And Nana Tewayawin means healing. So uh, what we do is uh, in, within the, the Nana Tewayawin program is that we promote healing uh, to the, the participants that uh, take part. And um, a lot of our programs are only offered to uh, our partners within uh, Red Deer and Safe Harbor is actually one of them. Mm -hmm. So we support individuals that are looking for cultural supports. And, um, and so that alone is just what the Nana Tewayawin uh, culture offers our partners. And uh, do you want me to talk about all our programs? Oh, let's, sure. let's, um, <laughs> Kel, let's yes, yeah. Before we do anything, Kel, okay. you, you just said that uh, <clears throat> your programs are only offered to your partners. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the programming that we, so um, uh, some of, it's not all of the, pro some of the program that we offer, like the cultural uh, support is actually only to Safe Harbor, um, Outreach, um, CMHA, McMahon, so um braiding so you're supporting mm -hmm. you're supporting those agencies that probably have people they're serving that are looking for that cultural connection absolutely right? yes exactly. and then kel is it something that i could just like do you have drop-in programs too then? oh absolutely or, yes we right. have drop-in programs uh <clears throat> uh so that's just one aspect that we that you have that on. we have yeah, yeah. is that mm -hmm. so that cultural connection yeah is for our our community partners that we gotcha that makes yeah. sense yeah and awesome. then of course uh the culture program uh we also do blanket exercises uh with the community and mm -hmm. also our partners yeah um, so you're then, helping the rest of us who are who are maybe serving that population but not knowing yes. that those appropriate cultural connections you're helping to show us and help um, us um ha try to build a little bit of that culture in our own spots hey absolutely while we're serving those people yeah. yeah that's cool i know the blanket exercises i've heard lots about them yeah, yeah. and so and Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Christian. No, I just wanted to ask about the blanket exercise. Like, is that something that um, like everyone who's interested can sign up for? And is that in regular, like, um, is that yes. Um, so now that COVID has, you know, hopefully moved on. Now that we're back in in-person programming, we're able to offer again, so we offer once um, a month a public community uh, uh, blanket exercise. So that's anybody 
in the community can come in and access and take the blanket exercise. Um, and then and Cal, we, yeah. what does it, what, what are the teachings that come with yeah. the blanket exercise? So the, so the, actually the blanket exercise was created by the Kairos, um, uh, by Kairos and what it is, it takes you on a walk, an interactive walk of the true history, what happened in Canada. Oh, okay, cool. So it, it goes right from pre-colonization yeah. and, and it's interactive and it's quite, it's a beautiful uh, exercise and it's very powerful and yeah. it speaks the truth the truth yeah. of what happens um yeah. you know there's lots of people that would be interested in knowing so, can you know, what is what is the interactive part can you explain so, the, so everyone takes parts everyone it represents the indigenous people so all the participants represent the indigenous people that uh, are in on turtle island or north america mm -hmm. and then we walk them through we have narrators that um, so we have the European. Um, they will they ha have a script that they read from. So it's kind of yeah. like a role play. It is, yeah, wow. yeah. And everyone uh, participates. Cool. And yeah. and where the blankets come in is the blankets represent North America. So yeah. it's uh, it's hard to explain really. But yeah. um, but you're standing on the blankets because they represent North America, and each time that um, you know land is taken away, we take a blanket away, and so oh, it gets okay. smaller and smaller. So it's like it's, it's visual. visual. Yeah, it's oh. visual and it's interactive, and uh, you rep like I said, the participants represent the indigenous. Someone. Yeah, people. yeah, that's oh. awesome. Yeah, and then after. No wonder everybody sure. likes it. Yeah, yeah. So, is, is it suitable for like, like for uh, children too, or like more for adults, mm -hmm. or like what would you think? So, um, so we do have, or there is, um, a blanket exercise for youth, mm -hmm. and um, we have we, we haven't offered that since COVID uh, was yeah. over, but um, the ones that we, you know, because it's a lot of work to, to do blanket exercises. Um, so right now we're only offering it to the adult community. Mm. And it can and be Carol, you said you do, it, you do it once a month? Twice a month. Twice a month. So and one, then... one is public, like for the okay, community. Yeah. And then the other one is, the other ones are for our community members. Yeah. Like education yourself, like safe, safe harbor and yeah yeah it's just so it's to you would have that posted on your website or something all the time yes when those yeah. are happening yeah absolutely and so we're on all social media yeah we're on facebook um uh t twitter instagram yeah. tiktok even i got some yeah TikToks. yeah i didn't even tiktok anything yet i didn't even tweet twitter anything well, your your team, Kath, is on TikTok. I saw yeah. a couple of. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> I'm oh, way behind. Awesome. Like by the time I catch up, I'm behind again. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you have to, you have to be in the flow. Yeah. I'm um, in a whole different flow. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and we also offer reconciliation circles. Mm. Oh, what is and what is so that? reconciliation is about just bringing people together sitting in a circle um, and, and that's indigenous and non-indigenous and just sitting down and um, talking about what reconciliation means to that individual, right? And how can we foster reconciliation and healing in our community, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's the, the focus of the circle is how do we promote reconciliation? How can we you know, make sure that we are um, taking part in that uh, healing of, of our Indigenous community, right? Because it's, 
it's a it's a it's everyone's responsibility not just um okay. non-indigenous it's our 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 responsibility too that reconciliation is a big word and that's a really cool uh circle i'm sure because we each have our own interpretation of that yeah. no um, absolutely. i just heard kel at the at the little children's day on truth and reconciliation day at city hall mm -hmm. i was there uh, ray saint denny was doing that metis guys were doing that yeah and they had an elder there who talked about reconciliation and she said something that really made me think i never thought about it before but she said to reconcile means we've healed the relationship to get it back to where it was and she said, we don't want to do that mm. in that particular definition of that word. And mm -hmm. so she says that she <clears throat> thinks of it, reconciliation as right relations, right relationships. You know, we've healed, we've mended, and we're going to move forward uh, in right relations. Right. And I thought, oh, yeah, that I like I kind of like that. Uh, we were just talking last week on Captain's Corner about the word vulnerability mm -hmm. and how it can be a positive and negative thing, uh, definition, right? And it's kind of same with reconciliation, I guess. I never thought of that when she said that, that, you know, we want to go forward from here. And I, yes, and I, I actually think, um, you know, a lot of people, Kath, will pick apart a word, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and that is her... That's her, I respect uh, yeah. what she, she's saying, but honestly for me, when, so when I'm asked, what does reconciliation mean? To me, it means moving forward. Yeah, yeah. And they not, just, yeah. not repeating the past, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, we can't change the past, but we can, we can only go forward and make yeah. sure whatever happens doesn't happen whatever happened doesn't happen again exactly. and you know in building trust again and because we are all related you know it doesn't matter what our skin color is or where we come from or yeah. what language we speak we are all related you know we are all children of the creator and yeah. that's what i think we need to get back to and we need to uh forgiveness is is, is huge and healing but, and, and you um, know what else, Kel? I was thinking like from a, a white man's perspective that we have to forgive ourselves mm -hmm. for doing yeah. that. Because like, I want to say, I didn't do that. Yeah, I wasn't even around, you guys. I was just a kid or whatever, right? Yeah. But I have hesitation to feel a true part of an indigenous circle because of that like mm -hmm. i feel like i don't know okay first yeah. of all you don't know you were you know and so i feel less a part of i feel mm -hmm. like outside the circle right um i just thought of that about how even though i wasn't there i have to forgive that part of our history or mm -hmm. something and, that, well, and even knowing yeah. knowing the history the true history because it, yeah. was, it was misrepresented and um, the truth wasn't there. A lot of people, yeah. like when they do the circles, Kath, they have no clue what happened. Like yeah. it just blows them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and it's the purpose of the circle isn't to cause shame or guilt. Yeah. It's just to put light on the truth yeah. to, to say, you know, this happened. And, you know, because saying the truth is what helps set people free do you know what i mean right. yeah way cal yeah. i totally know yeah, like totally so it's not it's not a circle where we want to say you look what you've done it's just no. like this is what happened can 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 you try your best to be an ally to make sure it doesn't happen again or look look into yourself and no. and see where you can change your belief system you know yeah. and understand why our people ha um ha struggle you know yeah. to to forgive and st or struggle to 
move forward. You know, it gives that perspective. Yeah. And when we have that perspective, we're, we're uh, more likely to understand and, and not judge. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Did you I, see that, com- that t-shirt at the conference, Kel? That I said, did. Don't that judge Teresa just had? much. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah, just want to, I uh, also ahead, when, when when you when you uh, just what you just said, Kath, I immediately I felt this collective shame, and for me, like I am an immigrant, I have I could say I have nothing to do with it. I was when I came, I was I didn't even know, I had yeah. no clue. For me, like the Germans are really um, excited about uh, the indigenous culture. They, um, you know, when they meet someone, they totally they want to talk to them they want to find out everything like they are like super hyped I would say so with this I came here and I thought what is going on because when I I I kind of I thought where are they (laughs) really stupid I thought where are they I couldn't see anyone and I was so excited to learn more about the culture and everything and there was just nothing that I could explore that was as I thought it would be Mm -hmm. Yeah. celebratory and out yeah out there yeah. and mm-hmm. everywhere yeah totally. well and and that's what the blanket exercise teaches is that our culture was taken away you know yeah. it talks about residential schools and and um and how we weren't allowed to speak our language and that we were to be assimilated you know into the uh european culture yeah you know Mm. and so that explains a lot that's why why you couldn't see him right yeah you know and you know just even myself growing up my mom was so ashamed of being indigenous and uh we weren't allowed sweet grass or sage I wasn't even allowed to you know uh talk about being indigenous she she wanted me to be as white as I could be you know and Mm. uh she's trying to keep you safe right you know and uh and and so that's that inter intergenerational trauma that we unknowingly pass down yeah. you know yes um yes. but now i we're on uh, so i can only speak for myself now i'm on a really good road i have found where i feel i belong you know and um being proud of where I, I come from and 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 that's both sides because my dad was was uh English and my mom was native so honoring both sides you know and yeah. um and, and 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 you know and that's important to honor both sides because I am proud of each all my heritage you know uh whether it's my European side or or my indigenous side but um feeling pride and belonging is so important yeah Mm -hmm. yeah awesome and um so i'm kind of getting hit we're in the weeds that's captain's corner (laughs) for you yeah that's what happens (laughs) you never know we're in the weeds how it happens go on (laughs) kelly (laughs) but um so we also offer well bridey uh the same as uh, Safe Harbor has done for for many moons. Um, And we meet uh, every Wednesday evening in person now, uh, before it was on Zoom, but now we're we're doing exclusively just in person. And, you know, uh, I don't know if you guys have talked about Well Bridey here on Captain's Corner, but it's a 12 step uh, program, which which is put into the medicine wheel. And, um, you know, Dr. Don Coyas in, in digitized AA basically, right? And made it, um, made it easier to understand and more relatable. Yeah. And he added some really good, um, you know, when you, when you have like a cake, but it's better if it has icing on it. That's how I think of well bridey, yeah. you know? You that, have, that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. right? Like it had, it, it was really good, but Dr. Don Coyce just added that, that icing and he brought in the indigenous teachings, right? And, and universal teachings, right? He talks about 
cognitive behavioral therapy in there. It's amazing, like what he brings. And while Bridie isn't just for individuals that struggle with addiction to alcohol and drugs, it's for, we're all in recovery. I don't care if you've yeah. never drank a drop of alcohol or smoked yeah. whatever ever in your life, we are all in recovery because uh, we all need to grow. We all need to heal. And we need to learn to love ourselves and be kind. And that's what Will Bridey teaches because that's the foundation is for us to forgive and love ourselves. Because yeah. when we can forgive and love ourselves, we can offer that to people and we walk a good road, right? Everybody thinks that, uh, you know, while Bridie is this red line, it's not, it's a wide road, you know, and it's not, we don't judge. We support everybody because everybody's on their own road and we support them when they're in the ditch. We support yeah. them when they're in the shoulder and we support them in whatever lane they're at. Uh, we just love people for where they're at and yeah. um, we don't shame people. We accept anybody from, uh, uh, from any uh, background. Uh, we believe that creator doesn't see color you know, and, you know, and we use the medicine wheel and in the medicine wheel, we have those four, those four colors and that represents the four races. And uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. while we're adjusting the medicine is for everyone. It is, it yeah. is. It's not just ours, you know, creator created every, everyone. And it doesn't matter how you identify um, your higher power, you know, I choose to call creator, creator, but you know, there's many roads to the creator, but it all leads to him, you know, and whatever works for you works for you. And I'm going to respect it. And that's what we, we believe in, in well Bridey. And, uh, and I cannot personally say it has, it's changed my life, you know, and it's changed uh, my family's life. You know, yeah. I had a daughter I had a daughter. I have a daughter who <laughs> uh, she, she suffered with anxiety. She couldn't leave the house for one year. And I tried everything. I got counselors to come into the house because she wouldn't leave. And I felt so helpless. And um, so the counseling helped a bit. I got her out of the house. And then I said, you know, come to Well Bridie. I gave her the book. She read the book. She wanted to come. And so she was 16 then, she is 21 now, and her whole life has changed. She, you know, of course is continuing to heal, but she is more confident and she has learning to love herself, you know? It's, it's yeah. all, it's amazing. I always just tell people, just come, you know? It's just not for uh, uh, people that struggle with addiction, it's for anybody because it allow it teaches you how to grow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool, Kel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super amazing. Oh. I remember a hundred years ago when I read that AA book for the first time because I was going to be working in a recovery house. And I read that book and I thought I thought I was going to find something magical, kind of. Mm -hmm. And I thought these are life skills. They are. Totally. I, thought, I thought, always thought the 12 steps were this mysterious thing, right? And then I, when I really looked at them and from my perspective as a life skills coach, even, I thought these are life skills. This is what we do to grow. And so to add, like you said, Kel, that indigenous component to that circle of growth um, is wonderful. And then, you know, we do it again for people uh, but that are buddhists yeah. and their you know their medicines in there and their way you know or whoever absolutely whatever those things are right it's just so, cool man and that's what yeah we knew we needed was multiple and, like a good a good root system and then yeah yeah mm -hmm. and you know um i i also bring in like other teachings like um the four agreements yeah that's written by the Toltec, right yeah. 
yeah. right? So you bring that in. So because that just adds, it just fits, it, right? What, what, and it just <clears throat> is this what more is it? tools. <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> it's Don a Miguel book. Ruiz, R U I Z. Yes. Okay. The four agreements. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and it, so it's just uh, an addition to how people grow right and and yeah. you know the first agreement is be impeccable with your word you know second is uh don't take things personal this is universal teachings right yeah. and when you look at every every religion spirituality um indigenous we, we have the same teachings do you know yeah. what i mean They're yeah. just at the bit at the base absolutely at the core right? if it's love if it's love yeah then Okay, let's go. Right. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I know, Kel. It's cool. Yeah. I could talk about well Brady forever, but yeah. yeah. And it sounds like um, you know, it's not just about learning something, it's really about the embodiment. Like it is. How can we really like live that? Because this is, I think, where where most people have the problem with they might be reading about it, but how do you get it down into yeah. your body? Like, and how can you you know, I think those yeah. circles, you know, those constant circles of like-minded people that are supporting mm -hmm. each other through that, because you're right. Absolutely. You can read a book to think, oh, that was cool. That made a mm -hmm. lot of sense. But where am it's I being all, challenged? And it's learning, it's sharing and learning how to apply it to your life. Yeah. I always tell people in the circle, um, you know, you can come to circle every week, but if you don't put the work in, because yeah. healing takes work. There's, mm -hmm. I said, I wish there was a magic wand. I wish I, if there was, I would have found it by now, but it takes work <laughs> and, yeah. um, and practice. Yeah, practice. absolutely. Mm -hmm. If coming here to a circle is great, but unless you don't go home and apply these teachings yeah. to your life, you're going to stay stuck. You're going to stay in that ditch. You're going to stay in those weeds, yeah. you know? So, um, but it's yeah. in having the circles is building that community, you know, and family, because it's all about relationships, right? And it's building those healthy relationships. So yeah. we have people, those natural supports in our lives, you know, when, yeah, when we need that help, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah, cool. it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So now we talked about blanket exercise. We talked about um, reconciliation circle. We talked about variety. Um, mm -hmm. This is already amazing. Like, is there anything else? Kelly has to come on for part two. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so right now I'm just really focusing, fo focusing, in, focusing. Yeah. In, oh my Lord. <laughs> focusing on the culture uh, the Nana Toyo and team, the, the culture program, mm -hmm. because honestly, if I was to talk about all our program, mm -hmm. we have so many programs and that's why I would like to encourage everyone uh, to learn about what the Fr Red Deer Native Friendship S Society does. We do have that YouTube uh, video that explains everything we do. Yeah. And so, um, and I can come on for, you know, your another show or a second part or whatever you want but we got seasons kel right yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the season but, but kel um, what's the youtube called so uh what does the red deer native friendship society do that's that's it that's it okay cool yeah, yeah. and it that's explains everything so so we uh covered uh that we also do cultural teachings um so once, once a month, we have uh, one of our, uh, um, so we call the, our Kukum and our Muslim, uh, do a cultural teaching, and that's open to the uh, community and to the public. That's offered once a month. Uh, we also have um, the New Horizons uh, Senior Program, which connects indigenous and non-indigenous seniors together so they can oh, cool. share right yeah it's so awesome that's and that's held uh once a month and uh yes. um and then they also have uh seniors uh tea and crafts so they can share you know their indigenous crafting yeah. and their uh, non-indigenous oh, yeah yeah and so we've um 
we are wanting to, you know, share share uh, programs within Red Deer with the seniors and to support them, you know, especially through COVID, uh, you yeah. know, a lot of them were isolated and, and so we spent a lot of time, you know, visiting them just outside yeah. their door and making sure that they had the food that they needed and you know, all yeah. that important stuff to keep them healthy and connected to the community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, and then we also have, um, like I was talking before, for our partners w in the community, like Safe Harbor, McMahon, um, the Outreach, CMHA, uh, Braden, uh, we have that cultural component. So st uh, staff can refer their uh, Indigenous clients to us if they need extra support yeah. um, mm -hmm. or if they would like a cultural teaching. And um, we have two helpers here, uh, Thomas Martell and Nadine, who go out and, you know, uh, they go out and uh, or can talk to them on the phone, whichever yeah. they prefer, um, and, you know, help them out with uh, connecting them to ceremony or to the yeah. cultural teachings here, or they need to speak to one of our, um, our Kokomara Muslim. Right on. Yeah. Well, then we have the youth program. So what's important is to, uh, because the youth is, the youth are our future and we want to, and that, uh, that means indigenous and non-indigenous. Um, and I think education is key. Um, and to, the key to stop racism, you know, we want to foster acceptance and understanding of our, of the Indigenous culture. So we offer our youth program to all youth in, and we have two age groups. The first age group is 10 to 15. And then the, the second age group is 16 to 24. Right on. And so we do on the land teachings and that's um once a week uh there's a youth program uh called youth on the land mentorship and uh we offer to each uh age group and uh we um because of covid are doing in person now we just last weekend did a tv raising and did some TV oh. teachings with the youth. And then uh, this Saturday, so that was with the 10 to, 10 to 15. And then this Saturday, it's for the 16 to 24. And um, and I think that group, Kel, came and helped our elder Lynn at our spring feast. Some of those oh. kids from that youth group. I think oh. they came to be Scofields. Oh, nice. That's think, awesome. Yeah. And then Are we also have... Uh, so coming up in October, uh, for the youth, we also have Halloween fire and stories. Mm. So uh, we're going to, you know, cook some marshmallows and some bannock over the fire and, you know, tell some, some stories. Um, right on. Yeah. And then uh, we also, so something that... Uh, so it was last year that we uh, launched our um, two-spirit program. Mm. And we did, we got some funding to do some research. Right on. And uh, to see what was needed in the community. And uh, what we found is that, um, is that we are our two-spirit, they need support and they need to know that they are supported and to educate because like what happened in in the past is that um the two spirits were all so two spirit means those uh individuals that are not heterosexual that um uh fall under the lgbtq um uh, yeah. community queer community mm -hmm. and um 
in history, our history, our indigenous history, we always held them as medicine people. They walked in two worlds and we revered them and they, mm -hmm. they had a place in, in the community. Uh, so we are wanting to unlearn everybody and to, to let everybody mm -hmm. know that they are important and that um, they are welcome. And uh, so we have a two-spirit program and we have, um, there is uh, October 20th, we have, uh, of course it's, you know, um, Halloween coming up. So, you know, it's Halloween themed and stuff, but uh, just a safe place for our two-spirit to come and actually uh, invite the LGBTQ community, the non indigenous yeah. to come and just have a safe space yeah. and to learn Imagine about that. the history, right? And to build that that pride of, you know, I'm two spirit in that, and that's a gift. Yeah. So, yeah. Think, and I'm so happy that we are able to, to do that. And we also have a new program that is, is for the two spirit and to address that suicide prevention yeah. because it's so prevalent yeah. in our, mm -hmm. our, you know, um, yeah. so, and building, um, our building up peers to be able to mentor. support each other, right. And to mentor each other and to give them training on suicide prevention and building that community that those natural supports that they'll have in their lives. Right. Yeah. So, you guys are doing so many wow. things, Kel. Right? You should, <laughs> Kath, look at this. <laughs> I can't even believe it. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to like go through all these posters and I don't want to miss anything. But honestly, we have so much going on. Uh, we have, um, every month we have a, a calendar that goes out. Um, it's on our website, the Red Deer Native Friendship Society.com or rdnfs.com. And uh, we have um, the Four Directions program, which has their own programs that support women and families. Um, they have cooking classes and crafting classes and in teachings. Awesome. You know, I could sit here for hours and talk That's about- That's so cool. All those different ways. Yeah, to connect and stay connected, like you said, Cal. Absolutely, and building yeah. relationship—it's so important for us to build relationship, you know, because that's where healing begins—is that trust, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and you know, of course, and we have, we have the Indigenous coordinated coordinated entry. So those individuals that are uh, without a home um, can come and fill out an intake and then be be put on a, a caseload if you know they decide or they figure out which program that they're best suited for right that they they qualify for and then we have the homelessness prevention program for those individuals that um you know are have fallen on rough times and you know they you know, aren't able to cover their rent and they have an eviction notice or they have mm. uh, shut off notices for their utilities. So it's a, it's a, a one time, here's a, here's a help up. We'll, yeah. we'll get your rent uh, up to date and, you know, to prevent this, you getting evicted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have the Indigenous, our Aboriginal in Intensive Case Management um, and that's where uh, we have uh, case managers that support uh, the people who uh, um, need to find housing and um, help them maintain their housing. Kel, how many wow. staff do you guys have now? Yeah. So you know? in like the whole of yeah. the Friendship Center, 38? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've been here since uh, 2015. 
November of 2015. And uh, I think when I started, we had 15 <laughs> staff. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good. Right on. Wow. Awesome. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. That was amazing. I actually had no idea what variety of things you, you offer for mm -hmm. the community. There's um, so much more and I didn't cover it all. I apologize. So, so <laughs> and maybe we can yeah. find that. We can find that in that YouTube video. Right? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Yeah. And like, check us out on Facebook and Instagram yeah. and Twitter. Red and Deer Native Friendship. But you said for the website, it's Red Deer. RDNFS.com. Yeah, RDNFS yeah. You know, and uh, if you cool. read smoke signals, I do them too. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I want to know that. <laughs> oh, and I, I, I can't forget we have once a month family friendship night. Mm, I've heard about that one. Yeah, and that's once a month, the, the last Tuesday of every month. And uh, we just had um, it on the 28th of September or 25th, I can't remember, one of those, the last Tuesday. And uh, we had like 100 people show up what right fantastic and Stu and Bannock and it's different every time it's a different theme and it's just about community and bringing community together to build awesome the in, network and meet people in the community and I we always do uh you know some type of indigenous teaching um keep it fun and stuff like that yeah and the next one is November the last Tuesday <laughs> and it's and a this Halloween is... Halloween oh yeah or, oh, sorry yeah last Tuesday of October the 28th and it's yeah. Halloween themed yeah so awesome. right and, on. and that is for for everyone to Every, everyone. everyone okay yeah. awesome so we will promote that once it once it uh, once it comes up yeah right on. <laughs> awesome Kelly thank you so much for joining us today thank that you. was amazing um yeah, it was so and, good to see you, Kath. You know, me and Kath go way back. Back to the buck truck. Buck truck. <laughs> right? But back so, to the buck truck. Right? That's and, right. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for, for having Captain's Corner and what you, Safe Harbor, does in the community. You know, um, we are so blessed to live in such an amazing community like Red Deer that, you know, cares about the the most vulnerable and the people that you know need uh, a hand up right yeah. so yeah. i appreciate it. thank you for inviting me and uh look forward to, forward to seeing you guys again maybe to talk about some other programs yeah <laughs> sounds amazing okay all right <laughs> Okay, everybody, steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you.